Hello and welcome to episode 14, season 2 of the Felsay Fitness Podcast. My name is Michael Joshua, I am the owner of Felsay Fitness Limited. Welcome to the show. If you've been listening over the last few weeks, you will have heard me talk about some promotions. They are still going on, we're into the last week of those. Also this week we are going to talk about breaking 90 for you golfers out there. So we talked about breaking 100 three weeks prior to the My Questions or Your Questions Answered uh, episode. So we are going to get into breaking 90 and three things that you can do to help yourself get that on the golf course. Also this week we are going to talk about nutrition and understanding labels on your food. So when you pick a packet up in the supermarket or you're sat there reading that huge bag of crisps, how many portions, how many serving sizes are you actually eating compared to the serving size that you think you're eating? So a little bit of info on how to read food labels this week. This information is also available via a blog post on the website. And speaking of the website, there is a endurance athletes guide to protein so and i say endurance athlete if you're an athlete who's playing football two or three times a week you're training a couple of times a week and you're playing on a weekend if you're playing 72 holes of golf a week fair play to you i mean i, I i'm a coach and i don't do that i barely managed to get uh, 18 on the board in in seven days let alone 72 these days but if you are you know, a triathlete, a runner, a marathon runner, whatever it may be, anything that's longevity. So you, you're out and you're training, even if you're, you're, you know, you're a bodybuilder and you're training for a couple of three hours, five to six times a week. This uh, endurance guide to protein via our blog on the website is all you're going to find that very interesting. Get head over there and give it a read. And last but not least, I am going to be talking about balls this week. And specifically, medicine balls. Not my balls, because nobody wants to hear about them. But medicine balls, I'm going to give you three exercises that if you can't get to a weight in a gym, whether it be a kettlebell, a barbell, or whatever, go and get yourself these three exercises done. You know, three to five sets bang for your buck and you can do it all in one space you don't need a massive amount of space to do these med ball exercises and that's pretty much what I've got to say this week uh, we'll crack straight into it shall we my week as always has been a weird one very weird so I've actually uh, cracked two of the fillings that I had about a decade ago. they finally broken. And inside a week, I've had one crack, uh, which was um, a root filling. So it's, it, it was a false tooth. And I was just getting picking something out of my teeth. And it's actually cracked off. And then a couple of days later, I had an old filling that I've had for about a decade or so, eight or nine years has also cracked so I've got both teeth either side on the same side have actually cracked so that's fun that's it's good trying to find a dentist at the minute um, but you know that's life you know I'm getting not getting any older and I, I do feel I take generally reasonable care of my teeth I brush them twice a day I have a little piece of gum every time I have something to eat I do floss quite regularly um, but yeah, I'm slowly falling apart. I'm not getting any younger. I'm not going to lie. It's it's kind of weird having your teeth. You know you have that dream where your teeth fall out? Mine are actually falling out. That's not good, is it? So, hey, whatever. Uh, my golf, on the other hand, 
has been worse. Um, I can't find a fairway with both hands if I've got a driver in it, in it. My short game skills are brilliant. I think anything inside 100 yards, 80, 90, 100 yards, I'm pretty much getting up and down in two from inside 70 yards at the minute. Uh, 100 to 120 yards, it's up and a couple of putts. Um, so I'm, I'm playing well into greens from that distance and even long approach shots has been reasonably good but tee shots are putting me in so, so much trouble it's really starting to affect my scores and it's not my confidence off the tee because every time I've got a driver in my hand I'm thinking where's this going so I've started hitting more four irons and then it's leaked into the hybrid and I hit two tee shots with a three wood the other day and I barely hit the toe of the club let alone the face so, yeah, me and, me and off the tee at the minute, not doing very well, which, you know, it's, we've all go through those worries. So it's not just you, um, people out there, the your high handicappers at 20 and 30 and, and what have you, uh, us, us mid to low handicappers do struggle a lot as well. We are not perfect. Um, and that's pretty much been it. Obviously, it was Father's Day. Um, Good day, just chilled out, relaxed. I played some golf, of course I did. Um, bought a massive fan, so eBay had got these uh, big silver fans. You see them in pubs all the time, big room-filling fans, like 20 inches. And it was like pretty cheap, but 40, 50 pounds. Uh, and that's been keeping me cool over the summer. I wanted to buy one for ages. So I just thought, ah, oh, an excuse, Father's Day, I'll have one of those. So I bought myself one. Probably one of the best presents I've ever had. And that's pretty much been my week. It's been fun. It's been good. I've played with a couple of new members uh, at Himley Hall. I've got a couple of new clients. Everything's going pretty well. It's been been a good week. That's, I've got much more to say about that, to be fair. And talking of good weeks, this is going to be your very last week to book online your 342. So unless you are a current client or you're a client that is booked in over the next sort of seven to 10 days, um, the 342 promotion will be ending if you are not. If you're on the books with me, you've had a session with me, personal training, fitness, nutrition, massage, golf performance, they're all still three for two until my 45th birthday, which is the 1st of July. So if you want a three for two, nine for six is a maximum booking. It's payable in advance, online, on the website, or in person after your first session. And if you don't get that in by the 1st of July, then bully for you. It ain't coming back. So get yourselves online. Nutrition and weight management, personal training, strength and conditioning, mobility, sports, massage, massage in general, and golf performance are all three for two. You'll have less than a week to go once you are listening to this. So get on board, people. And I think we'll shake it up a little bit this week. I think we're going to start with our nutrition tip. Um, and this is something that I've been asked a lot. And it's something I did get a few emails about. I nearly made the, uh, the three most requested uh, last week. So, understanding nutrition labels. Now, nutrition labels have changed a little bit. But what you need to look out for is, you know, the star of nutrition labels is the nutrition facts panel on the back of any product. So the back of most products that you pick up in store, you flip it over, there's a big nutrition facts label or big, big label that's got the likes of uh, serving sizes, as say, for instance, one cup, 240 milliliters, serving con um, servings per container, is two so it's 480 milliliters calories per serving is like 120 calories 
Uh, calories from fat is 45 grams. You know, percentage values, which tends to be total fat, uh, might be like this. Is, this is just for instance, five grams, which is eight percent. Saturated fat, which is three and a half grams, which is eighteen percent, um, and obviously, so on and so forth. So the information you need to derive from that. So when you've got your giant bag of Doritos in your hand, and you're going to go and watch a movie, or you've just bought them in the cinema, what you're actually buying there, I think it's pretty close to. I think it's pretty close to about three bags. I think they're 90 grams. And if I'm not if I'm not mistaken now, a lot of crisps or snacks of that sort have gone down to about 90 grams, 90 to 100 grams a bag. But they say the serving size is like 23 or 27 grams. So if it's 23 grams per serving. And you munch a whole bag of, for instance, Doritos. I'm not saying this is the fact. I don't know the facts for the nutrition label, but it's just I'm grab plucking things out of the air. So it's a it's a hundred gram bag. It's 23 grams a serving. You eat the whole bag. So essentially, you've had four servings. So for instance, if a serving is 125 calories, you've just basically noshed 500 calories which is almost a quarter of your daily allowance of calories in one bag of chips. So just be careful when you are looking at nutrition labels. Making, make sure that when you're putting your food down, some people, I, I spoke to a, someone recently, and they were talking about pasta. Um, and particularly just bog standard fusilli. So they were having like brown fusilli and they were making like a tuna pasta salad for work and they've always done it to 100 grams. They've always had 100 grams. So they'll, they'll do 200 grams. They'll do two portions. They've got tuna pasta salad. So they've got 200 grams of pasta that they'll munch throughout the day with a tuna pasta and salad, etc., etc. And I said, well, what's the serving size on the label? And I got them to, to send me a picture of the back of the label. And the serving size was actually 70 grams. I said, so what you're actually doing is you're, you're not only you're eating a lot of carbs and a lot of pasta, you're eating basically nearly three servings. So three meals worth, three people, three persons worth of pasta a day. So you're essentially eating three meals of that product in one day. I said, so you're... 100 gram and 200 gram session so that's 200 grams 70 and 70 is 140 you're 10 grams light of having three versions of that meal in terms of pasta and they couldn't they couldn't get over that and i said well you've been doing that for a long time that probably explains why you're still having a a, a couple of issues so things like that need to be looked at i'm just looking at my soda can so nutrition information on this soda can that I've got is energy is like, uh, I think it's 100, it's 114 calories, 114 calories, 114 calories. Uh, there's 3.6 grams of sugar uh, and 3.6 grams of carbohydrate, which all comes from sugar. So that's a little nutrition label and obviously it's a 330 mil can and that's for the whole can. Oh no, this is per 100 mil, sorry. It's 14 calories, not 141. I was going to say that's going to be heavy, isn't it? So it's 14 calories per 100 mil, but it's a 330 mil can. So you work that out, that is 42. You're probably looking pretty close to 50 calories per can. And that's how quickly things can spiral out of control. So taking a look at serving sizes is a, a great way of controlling your diet and controlling how much of a certain product that you eat. You know, and also when you're looking at it, total grams in fat, saturated fat of those total grams, uh, and any like cholesterol, trans fats, well trans fats are banned now as far as I'm aware. But dietary fiber, sugar, and protein 
should all be on your nutrition facts. Um, which is, you know, fantastic. Because this information was not available early on in my life. Relying on claims as well that some labels make. Um, so describing a food as high in calcium, uh, a high calcium diet helps women maintain healthy bones and may reduce the risk of osteoporosis in later life. Things like that are just little statements. They are to help sell the product. You know, relationships between certain things, they are true. So by having drinking milk, for instance, is going to help you. It's high in calcium. Of course it is, it's milk. So drinking that, a diet high in that calcium can help healthier bones. So if you get more calcium into your system, your body can utilize that calcium to build bones. That's just simple science. They're not lies, but it is kind of stretching the truth because it's not quite as simple as that. You need other things in your diet than just milk or yogurt to help you make healthier bones. So, you know, food labels, just be aware of portion sizes, how much fat, how much sugar, how many carbs, how much protein is per serving. And check how many servings of that product, like Twixies is weird. So Twixies go, oh, per serving, but per serving is actually only half a bar. Twixies, like Kit Kats, come in twos and fours. So if you've got a four block of Kit Kat, Per serving, it might be, you know, oh, only 72 calories per serving. But there's four bars in there, and each bar is a serving. So that that whole Kit Kat, four-finger four, pack, four Kit Kat, which you don't see that often anymore, is not only, you know, 72 calories per stick. You've got four of them. So the 72 calories ends up being like 268, two, nearly 270 calories for the whole thing and you've had a little snack and 270 calories is you know a good 10 percent 8 to 10 percent of your daily allowance of, of, of calories and it's going to be high in sugar more than likely so just be aware of your food labels make sure you're checking your portion sizes how big those portion sizes are and that is going to help you with your planning of your meals your planning of your nutrition and help you live a healthy and more balanced diet. Any more information on that, like I say, I have got a giant blog post on the website. Go take a look. There's some in-depth looks at food labeling and where you can get that info and how you can understand that info a bit more in depth. But I just thought I'd mention it this week because it's been something that's cropped up over the last few weeks that uh, I wanted to talk about. Moving into your exercise of the week then, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, this is going to be a interesting thing because it's not one exercise, it's actually three. And it's more of a piece of equipment uh, post that I want to talk about than just an exercise. So I've done this quite a while and I've been doing this with a few clients. So med balls and kettlebells have come in very very handy for the people who don't want to lift big barbells and don't want to lift dumbbells kettlebells and med balls are not scary things it's just a ball with a weight in it's a kettlebell it's a round ball with a handle on and these things are less frightening than a six seven eight foot long barbell with big strapping weights on the side of it because that can be quite scary to some people so by getting to do very similar movements with lighter or heavier dumbbells and uh, sorry kettlebells and med balls slash slam balls then it can have a great just as great an effect as if they were using barbells and dumbbells so this week i want to talk to you about um dumbbells What's it dumbbells what am i talking about today 
I want to talk to you about med balls. And these med ball exercises, um, there's a link in the description to some med balls. So go take a look at those uh, med balls after I've discussed these. But basically, these are perfect little exercises. And I think these three exercises in particular are the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to a med ball or slam ball. So the first one, I mean, they're great for core strength, first of all. You know, strong abs, obliques, uh, back and hip muscles prevent unwanted slumping, hunching, twisting. Uh, and they can also, you know, rob you from a little bit of power if you play the likes of cricket or rowing or you're a cyclist or you're a tennis player or a golfer. They can, if you have a, a weak core, so strong abs helps you drive from the body, drive from the core but to be able to hit that big top hand or that big serve or smash a golf ball 300 yards or row in a team as hard as everybody else helping generate more speed on that boat. So I think, you know, med balls and kettlebells are fantastic. And these are my three top exercise med ball exercises that I think you should be doing in the gym. Add them into your routine, see how you get on. So the first one I want to talk about is the Russian twist. Yes, you can do this with a dumbbell. You can do it with a kettlebell. But Russian twists... Um, are awesome for building core strength and back stability. So you sit with your knees slightly bent, feet flat on the floor, or heels on the floor, hold the med ball in front of your chest, lean back slightly, not so you're falling over, but lean back slightly, you know, 35, 45 degree angle. With your, with your legs flexed and your heels touching the floor, Keep the ball at your chest and then rotate from side to side, touching the med ball from one side back to your chest and then the other side. And then return to centre and rotate again. So if you do 8 to 12 reps, 3 to 10 sets, this is going to help you create some core stability. It's going to help with the obliques. It's going to help with the, you know, being able to drive from your core when you're hitting a tennis shot, a cricket shot, rowing, whatever it may be, it's going to give you some balance. It's going to build you some core strength pretty quickly. So add that into your routine. It's going to be awesome. The second one I want you to do is a single leg deadlift. So all I want you to do is stand with your feet close together, med ball, held at your waist and all you're going to do is keep one leg so if you stood you're stood on your right leg keep your left leg your left foot so the toe of the foot is just behind you and all I want you to do is hinge forward from the hips and either if you have the mobility touch that med ball on the floor and raise yourself back up and then repeat that for 8 to 12 reps, 3 to 10 sets, and obviously switch sides once you've done one side, do the other. You may find that you have a, a little bit of a disability in terms of mobility. So you may find that the right leg, you're able to stretch down to the floor and touch the, touch the ball on the floor, but your left leg you can't, which means you have an imbalance. So by doing this, and getting your stretch self stretched out before you work out, it's going to help you correct that imbalance. So, single leg deadlift, hinge from the hips, one leg first, then the other leg, 8 to 12 reps, 3 to 10 sets, you'll see the benefit. And you might even find something out about yourself in terms of how strong your hamstrings are, how strong your glutes are per side. So, doing single leg things like this. As I talked before, bilateral training or unilateral training 
things like that are going to bring out imbalances and it's going to help you build a stronger more balanced physique too third and final one is a very interesting one um, if you've dealt with kettlebells before then you will have heard of a, a goblet squat so you're basically holding the kettlebell sort of chest high and you're going to do a, a freestanding squat and the other exercise added in with this is a halo. So with a kettlebell, you take you take the kettlebell and you just rotate it round your head like it was the moon rotating round the earth. You're going to rotate that round your head. So what I want you to do with this, I want you to squat down, then take that kettlebell and do a halo. So imagine that kettlebell, that kettlebell, that med ball. So you squat down with the med ball in your hand and use that med ball. Pretend your head is the earth, the med ball is the moon, and you're just going to all the way around back to your chest and stand up and again eight to twelve reps of that three to ten set three to ten three to five sets and let me know how you get on this is a great thing because you're you're down in a a fixed position so you've got to stabilize with your your glutes your hamstrings your quads and then obviously the halo is then putting excess pressure and a little bit of stress on your core so your back your abs have got to brace your body in that that almost seated squatted position to help build some balance so those are my three exercises of the week add them in add this little med ball in i mean do this as a little set at the end of your session so do it as a little mini set to finish off your workout and let me know how you get on but those are the three exercises I wanted to mention you know Russian twist squat and halo and the single leg deadlift with a med ball there's a med ball link in the description go buy yourself one they're pretty cheap and they're pretty durable they'll last a very long time I've had mine for about five eight eight years I've had mine eight years and there's, they've been slammed, they've been thrown at walls, they've been thrown at people. They're still looking pretty brand new. Uh, so you definitely get your money's worth out of them. And if you're stuck for time in the gym or you're stuck waiting for equipment, grab yourself a med ball, do this workout, you're getting a, you know, some leg exercises in, you're getting some squatting exercises in and you're getting some core and you're getting some upper body work at the same time and you can even add some slams in there as well to, to build some energy and some muscle and that people is the exercise or three exercises of the week so it's nearly the end of the month and all of you guys out there who've bought sessions from me thank you very much uh, especially those golf performance people who are my new clients and my new audience the golf performance the first draw for the pressure putt so all those people who've bought sessions all those people who've come to the five pound uh, short game Sundays your names are in a hat that hat will be drawn live on Instagram on the 1st of July. I will draw that name out the hat uh, and you will be picking up yourself a pressure putt as a big thank you from me. This is a, a 25, 30 pound piece of equipment that you can put almost anywhere. Hotel room, kitchen floor, bathroom floor, on a putting green in your garden you can practice your putting anywhere with this it's a useful tool that I have definitely used a lot over the last 12 months and as a thank you for being clients this draw is going on every month first of every month and the first one is going to be first of July and I will be doing that live on Instagram finally then breaking 90 new series so I did breaking a hundred and we discussed a few things. In fact, we discussed quite a, quite a lot of things. But these are even newer things. I 
and it's all going to be so we're going to look at squaring the club face you know there's a lot of things that we can do to help you you play better golf so the first thing we're going to look at once you're playing and you're breaking 100 regularly the next goal is breaking 90 And what I want to talk about is, you know, swinging yourself in unison, having rhythm, having some feel in your golf swing. You hear a lot of good players talk about keeping the club in front of them. What that means is the player is trying to remain nice and smooth, turning the backswing, which allows the arms to remain in front of the chest for as long as possible. In other words, the body, the arms and the hands all work as one. Um, and when you do this correctly, all you have to do on the downswing is produce an accurate shot, is rotate those hips back towards the target, and you'll just automatically feel the flow of your swing. So a little drill we're going to get you to do this, so you can do this at home. With every iron and every wood you have, set yourself a tee peg on the ground. And what I want you to do is just stand with your feet together and just let your arms swing so they're clipping that tea bag till you clip it out the ground. And once you've done that with, with an iron, I mean you don't have to do it necessarily with every iron, but I'm thinking maybe like pitching wedge, eight iron, six iron, four iron, hybrid three wood driver. Set those tea pegs up, give them a clip. Once you're brushing that tea peg with your feet together, all I want you to do is try and repeat that feel in a full swing and see how the ball goes. It's going to help with your timing because you, you're feeling the weight release. You're feeling that club release through that tee peg and all you're going to do is address the golf ball and do the same thing. Feel that club release through the golf ball and let me know how you get on. So sequencing your swing, being able to control your rhythm is a great way so if you know you've got a smooth swing and you hit the golf ball pretty cleanly then you're halfway there to being on the way to 90. so breaking 90 this week little drill go and get yourself some tee pegs put them in the ground half set of golf clubs you can do this at the driving range you know with that rubber tee that sticks about the floor so all i want you to do is just clip that so clip that two or three times, three or four times, so you can just feel that club release through that tee peg. And then put a ball down and hit it. And see how you get on. See how that feels. It's going to help you release through the club, help you time your swing a little bit better, and hopefully help you create a little bit more better contact. And once you've got that, you can add some speed in. And then, hey presto, you're breaking 90 with ease. So take that under advisement, go and do that drill and see how you get on. Let me know if it works for you. And that's your first tip to breaking 90 is crisp, crisp strikes this week. Give it a go. And that's pretty much it for this week. It's a reasonably short one compared to previous ones. I mean, we're still pushing like the 35 minute mark, but here you go. Thank you for listening. Thank you to all of my clients who have come, all the new people I've met. You've been fantastic. I know your golf scores are getting better. I know your health and fitness is getting better. I know your nutrition knowledge is definitely getting better. And I would like to think that you are definitely enjoying yourselves, playing better golf, being better human beings, and enjoying this life that we have. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of the podcast for the last few weeks and this year. Go and take a read of the blog posts. There's some very interesting stuff on there this week. Enjoy your week. Have a great time. I hope your golf is better. I hope the information I give you is interesting. I hope... Someone out there listening or reading 
is taking it on board and making a positive change in their life. That's all I want to do. One person does that, then I'm a happy bunny. So go and enjoy your week. I know I'm going to enjoy my week. I've got some golf tomorrow, some great clients coming. Have a good one. See you next week. Breaking 90, number two, going to be a very important one. So we've touched on what you need to do this week. Next week is going to be very, very important to breaking 90. We're going to look at some more nutrition tips, some more exercise tips, and some more of me talking crap about how good or how bad my teeth are. <laughs> Have a good week, everybody. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's Michael signing off. See you next week. Bye-bye.